Hi everyone. So my name is Vicky. Um, so this is my final project report and update for the pattern recognition course for this semester. So my project title is Music Genre Classification Using Machine Learning. Okay, so this is a brief outline of the slides that I'm going to be presenting today. So first off, I'm going to be talking about the background, about why we need music genre classification. Then we're going to give you a brief overflow of the proposed technique. We're going to talk about what kind of data sets we used. And we're going to introduce the two types of classifiers that were investigated in this project. Then we're going to talk about our setup. And then we're going to result, talk, talk about the different results that we got from the respective classifiers. OK, so music information retrieval is a pretty broad and interdisciplinary field. So the basic premise is to extract meaningful information from songs. So this can have a lot of applications, such as music transcription, copyright monitoring, as you can see over here, music management. And obviously, they're a big part of digital music platforms, which brings us to the topic of music genre classification. Now, this kind of feature where you can automatically classify a song in just genre, given the song, is vital for digital music platforms such as Spotify, SoundCloud Title, and Apple Music. They find applications in areas such as playlist generation, which is important. Part of They can be part of music recommendation systems, and also they can help to optimize song search as well. Now, previous approaches relied on analyzing song file metadata or relying on users to input the genres of the songs that they were listening to. Now, obviously, such approaches are unscalable, tedious, and they're highly subjective. And add to the fact that more than 75,000 albums are released every year, and the volume of songs that get produced on a day-to-day -day basis, we need automatic approaches for performing music genre classification. OK, so this is the machine learning-based approach for music genre classification. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to have a song database from which we're going to extract features. The extract features, which correspond to the songs, are going to be divided into a training set and a testing set. The training set is going to be used to train our classifiers. In this case, it's Ganesh neighbors and neural networks. And using the testing set, we're going to find the accuracy of the classifiers that we used. Now, this is the flow that we adopted in the project. But if a music genre classification system were to be adopted in an actual product, it would probably look something like this, where you feed in an audio file. The features are extracted. So that means the classifier is already trained. Then using the features extracted, the classifier would pop out a genre label, which can be used for various different tasks. OK, so this is the song data set that we used for this project. The first one is the GTZAN data set which has 1,000 audio files, which 16 bits each. The sampling rate is 22,050 hertz. It's 30 seconds. Each track is 30 seconds. And there's 10 genres, as you can see over here. And in addition to this data set, we also use the million song data set, which has a much larger number of songs, 59,600. But these were pre-processed. So these were raw audio files, where these ones came pre-processed. But the number of genres were the same as that in the GTZAN data set. OK, so now we're going to be talking about feature Extraction. So from the audio files, what kind of features are we interested in for our, for our machine learning based classifiers? OK, so the feature that we considered in our case was the mel substrum frequency coefficients, also referred to as MFCCs. Now, they are a widely used feature vector for different purposes, such as speech and sound recognition. And they give you a pretty good idea of the timbral feature of audio signals. Now, what is different from MFCCs and other audio features is basically MFCs is taking into consideration the human perception of frequencies. That means humans almost can hear certain frequencies in a more important way than the other ones. So uh, what I mean by this will be clear in a few steps when I actually talk about how we calculate MFCC coefficients. OK, so what do you need to do to extract these coefficients? The first thing you do is first read in the song as a time series, as you can see over here. This is a classical track from the GTZAN database. You take the FFT of the song signal. Actually, before you do that, you need to make sure you break up the song into frames. So what I mean by frames is a frame is basically a sample, a portion of the song that has, in our case, 256 samples. So that's one frame. That corresponds to roughly 11 milliseconds. So each frame, you take the FFT of the frame signal. Then you apply a triangular filter bank, which can be seen over here. Now. The thing about this is now th this is the power spectrum of the signal, and then the strangler filter bank has been applied. Now you can see that the towards the lower frequencies, the filter banks are highly concentrated. So this is how MFCCs are actually taking into account human perception of sound. So we're actually more clearly able to 
here are the subtle differences in simple features in these frequency ranges. So that's why the triangular filter banks are more concentrated towards the lower frequencies. Right? So after we apply the filter banks and we convert it to the melt scale, we take the log of the signal and finally we take a discrete cosine transform. And from the final spectrum that you get, the amplitude that you have in that spectrum, those are basically your MFCC coefficients. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how we represent these MFCC features as our feature vectors. So after we extract the MFCC from the songs, what we're going to be doing is basically visualizing each song as an array. So each song is going to have the MFCC coefficients. So this one row basically corresponds to one frame of the song. And with our sampling rate and our frame size, we have 2,584 frames. So each frame has 14 MFCC coefficients. As you can see, we actually extracted 15, but the first one was discarded because it only contains offset values and higher MFCCs don't necessarily contain any relevant spectral information, so we can discard them. So in essence, we basically used a matrix of size 14 by 2584 as our feature vector for each song. Further, we took the mean vector and covariance matrix of this MFCC matrix as our final feature vector. OK, so now we're going to be talking about our classifiers. So the first one we used is the k-nearest neighbor algorithm, which is a simple supervised non-parametric learning algorithm. So what happens is this approach is basically you have a test set and you have a training set. Now what happens is for every song in the test set, you calculate its distance to every other song in the training set. As you can see over here, all the distances are calculated. And after you calculate the distances, you get the k-nearest neighbors of the song in the test set. In this case, it's these songs for k equal to five, you have these five songs. And after that, you apply a simple majority voting rule. And as you can see here, three of the songs in the training set of the k set are labeled as classical. So obviously for the song in the test set, we label it as classical. So it's a pretty simple scheme. So again, to perform k nearest neighbor classification, we need a notion of distance. So in our experiments, we use two different notions of distance. The first one is Euclidean, which is pretty straightforward. You just take the Euclidean distance between the two mean vectors of two songs. And in addition, we also consider the Malabanus distance, which in addition to the mean vectors also consider the inverse of the covariance matrix. So these are two distance measures that we employed. And the other classifier that we used was neural networks. Now, neural networks are an extremely popular machine learning technique, right? So the fundamental uh, in our case, we are using the feed-forward neural network, which means there's no feedback loops. So the neural network basically consists of several nodes, which are basically activation functions. So there's an input layer, hidden layers, and output layers in which the nodes are arranged. The input layer takes in the feature vectors. The hidden layers compute the activation function using a weighted sum of its inputs. And the output layer basically consists of as many nodes as there are genres we need to classify. So for example, if there's four genres we need to classify, there's four nodes in the output layer. So that's the neural network architecture, generic one. OK, so now we're going to be talking about our generic setup. So all the scripts were coded in Python and open to virtual machine environment. The MFCC coefficients that we talked about before, they were extracted using the Librosa package and also custom scripts. And in order to isolate the test, test set and the training set, we employ two schemes, random sampling and also stratified sampling, where we make sure that the test set and the training set, there's a proportional number of each of the genres. Uh, the key nearest neighbor algorithm was implemented from scratch. The inputs are basically the mean vector and the covariance matrix if we're calculating the Mahalabanus distance. And for the neural network, we employed the Keras and Piano neural network package where we use the sequential model with a varying number of hidden layers. Uh, details regarding these will be talked about when we talk about the results. Okay, so first we're going to be talking about the results that we got using k nearest neighbors. So in this experiment, where we perform 100 trials and we set k equal to 6, we are trying to classify between four different genres. So we have classical, jazz, metal, and pop. As you can, so the reason these numbers appear as decimals is because this is an average of 100 trials. So this basically means around 13 songs were classified as classical when they were actually classical. So that corresponds to about a 56% accuracy for the classical genre. However, you can see that for some other genres such as pop, actually there is a large number of pop songs that were accidentally classified as metal. So 
the error is actually pretty high for these genres as well. So the overall accuracy was uh, near 41.25% with this class of R. And also, in addition to performing this averaged k-nearest neighbor classification, we also explored the effect of the distance metric on the effectiveness or the accuracy of the k-nearest neighbor class of R. So we conducted 500 trials where we used the Euclidean distance metric and the Mahalabanis distance metric. And we can see that the mean and the standard deviation figures for the accuracy are more or less similar. So we can see that there, for the data set we used, the choice between Euclidean and Malabanus didn't really matter too much. And it kind of makes sense also because when we calculate the Malabanus distance, we need the covariance matrix. But since the MFCCs are calculated using discrete cosine transform, that kind of does a little bit of decorrelation as well. So the covariance matrix doesn't really give you too much information. So that kind of makes intuitive sense as well. Okay, another parameter that we varied for the k nearest neighbor class of R was that we changed the number k for the class of R's. So we chose different values of k for the classical jazz, metal, and pop genre. And then we can see that the accuracy stays more or less similar for the chosen genre subset of classical jazz, metal, and pop. Obviously, if you choose another data set, you probably would not expect to see the same trend. But for this particular data set, we can see that k does not really affect the accuracy of the systems too much. Another experiment that we did with k-nearest neighbors was that we chose 100 different random combinations of the four genres. So in addition to classical jazz, metal, and pop, you could have categories such as rock, metal, pop, country, and we tried to distinguish between them. Now, obviously, when we did this, the accuracy went down. The mean of the accuracy across these 100 random combinations was 34.65% with a standard deviation of 5.47. So what we noticed was that for combinations such as rock, metal, pop, and country, or rock, metal, blues, and pop, the classifier got routinely confused between a few, certain few genres, such as rock and blues. It confused it a lot. And that is kind of confusing to a human listener as well. So it, it, these, these kind of results are more or less expected. OK, after that, we performed classification using neural networks. So these are the this is the confusion matrix that we got using the neural networks we can see that the neural network actually does pretty well for the pop genre, where we already identified 14 out of 20 pop songs in the test set correctly. So that's a 70% accuracy for the pop genre. And you got a 50% accuracy for the classical genre. So no matter if you use neural network or universe, we kind of saw that we're getting consistent or high results for the classical genre. And we also repeated the classification with neural networks for 15 trials, and we got an average accuracy of 46.67% and a standard deviation of 4%. So still not impressive, but it was slightly better than the key nearest neighbor algorithm. Yet another thing that we explored in our experiments was that we varied the number of genres that we had to classify. So instead of four, we also used five, six, seven, eight, nine, and also the complete 10 genres that were available in the GTZAN data set. And we can see that the testing accuracy actually goes down steadily as you increase the number of genres. This is in accordance with results that have been shown in related work as well, where people have showed that the training testing accuracy goes down as you increase the number of genres above four. Now, this could be due to two reasons. Obviously, some of the genres, as I talked about before, blues and rock, the machine learning algorithm could get confused between those two. Also, we found some papers that said that there were some songs that were mislabeled and had distortions, or there were some repetition of songs in the GTZ and data set. So these two factors combined would make it hard for us to classify a large number of genres in the GTZ and data set. In addition to the GTZAN data set, we also explored classification with the million song data set. Now, obviously, we didn't use the entire million songs, but we used a subset of it, where 59,600 tracks were provided. And we split into 90, a proportion of 90, 90 for the training and 10 for the testing. And as opposed to the GTZAN data set, where we had to extract uh, the MFCC coefficients, the timber feature vectors, which are more or less similar to MFCCs, were provided. We just interact use these feature vectors. And we ran the neural network on this data set. And as we can see here, this is the confusion matrix. And then this is the overall accuracy chart for the different genres. Again, we can consistently see that whether we use k-nearest neighbors, neural networks on the G design data set or the MSD data set, we can get pretty high classification results for classical. However, other genres have a much lower accuracy. As you can see over here, pop has a pretty low accuracy. And you can see in the confusion matrix, a lot of pop songs were confused with classic pop, which kind of makes sense. And also, hip hop also had a low accuracy. Now, this was because the data set was not uniformly distributed. There were 
only a few hip hop songs available in the data set. Now, although this is reflective of what kind of data you might encounter in real life, but still, the fact that the neural network did well on some of the other genres is pretty encouraging. Right? So the overall accuracy of this entire data set was 61.02%. Okay, so in conclusion, we performed musical genre classification using MFCC feature vectors. Two types of classifiers were exposed, explored, k-nearest neighbors and neural networks. Overall, the neural networks performed slightly better than the k-nearest neighbors for the G-Design data set. And also the neural network performed decently well on the MST data set. Now, obviously, there was a lot of confusion between genres, which is kind of natural. And actually, there was also a study that tried to perform music genre classification using human subjects where the accuracy was only 70%. So this kind of highlights the problem of music genre classification and why it's inherently a hard machine learning problem. Okay, and these are the list of my references. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing a quick demo of my code. So first off, I will be running the key nearest neighbor algorithm where I prepared a demo script. So this code basically runs 10 trials of the key nearest neighbor algorithm for the classic jazz, metal, and pop genres. Okay, so the simulation is finished. So what's happening here basically is, okay, so this is the confusion matrix that we got over here. Right? So as you can see again, this is classical. So you can see a high, high number of classical songs are identified correctly. Now this is the average of 10 trials. That's why you have decimal and confusion matrix. And now we will explore, yeah, so let's see this example over here. Now, this is an example of a correct prediction. So now let's see. The current song that was selected in the test genre was jazz. And we found after calculating the distances that these were the genres that were the nearest to it when k was set to six. We had jazz, pop, jazz, 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 pop. Obviously, if you apply a majority coding scheme, the label should be jazz, and that is actually what the classifier did. Actual was jazz, and it predicted jazz as well. Now, here's an example of a wrong prediction, which we cherry picked as well. Now, here the value of k was also six. Now, in this case, the current genre was classical, but as you can see over here, when you set k equal to six, you have these candidates, and obviously there's only one classical track, but there's three pop tracks. So obviously, when you take a majority, it's classified as pop. So this is an example of a wrong prediction. Neighbors. Now we'll show you a short example of our neural network. Okay. So as you can see over here, so this is the song data dimension. So 400 songs corresponding to 100 songs from each genre were chosen, right? And 119 refers to the vector that was created from the mean vector and the covariance matrix. So the covariance matrix was flattened by using the upper triangle of the covariance matrix since it's symmetric. So that's why it's 119 in length. And these are the four genres. So Four genres refers to four nodes in the primary output of the neural network. So we used a one-hot encoding scheme where this vector 1000 corresponds to classical and so on for the other genres. So we did run the neural network for a large number of epochs, but for this short demo here, we only ran it for 10 epochs. And this is the confusion matrix we get over here. So as you can see here, and we can read about it in the paper as well, like neural network is pretty good with the pop data set and also it's pretty good with the classical data set so this is classical this is jazz this is metal and this is pop right so it did pretty well with our classical data set however the test accuracy overall is only 35 percent which is pretty disappointing but obviously this is only for one trial and you can see here the testing accuracy never even goes up to 100 percent so obviously we need a large number of epochs so in order to show you here i've actually run the neural network for 50 epochs where you can see the testing accuracy, the training accuracy, sorry, goes up to 90%. And in that case, you can see the test accuracy boosts up to 52.5%. And you can see a large number of classical songs are identified correctly, as well as metal songs. So that does it for my demo. Thank you so much.